Well, this is pretty much all the equipment that I have to have when I'm ultrasounding cattle. Um, first off, this is the main part. This is the ultrasound machine. This is an Aloka 500. It's a very dirty one right now. It's about to be cleaned, but that's, it gets used quite a bit is what they say. Uh, there's two components of this, the machine itself, and then this probe right here are two separate parts where they hook in. And, uh, both of those we get separately and use. You can also use the same machine to palpate cattle if it takes a different probe. And then I have just your standard basic sta uh, desktop computer. The reason I have to use this instead of a, a laptop is because of there's a capture card inside here that's plugged into the motherboard and they don't make an external frame grabber so we have to uh, have uh, just a your regular desktop computer for the software to be able to work and it's hooked up directly to the uh, computer to where we freeze the images on this machine and then we capture it on here and it goes over here to the uh, monitor just about any kind of monitor that you want to carry with you the oil is a conductor any kind of oil will work. We usually use something cheap because they have to go through so much of it. This is the standard vegetable oil. Uh, and then the comb, we have to apply the oil first and then we have to scrape it in. We have to get all the dirt and hair and air out of the image to get a, a seal between the uh, animal and steel. This is a standoff pad. Uh, you've noticed it fits the curvature of an animal's back. The probe fits in it. It's to lift this probe off the animal's back if we don't have this, we can't get a, a good back fat uh, reading. You can lay the probe up there and you can pick up the ribeye in the image, but this is what's required to pick it up off the back so we can get a proper ribeye back. Because on that image is where we will also get our back fat reading from. First off, we have to repair the animal. And we're looking for these last two ribs, 13th and 12th rib, because we're going to measure right between those last two, perpendicular with them. We don't want to be on or across it. We want to be right straight up between them to measure the ribeye lays across the top here. We're going to, we get, we're looking for three positions. We'll measure here, across here from Marvin, a horizontal image, and then our rump fat, we pivot off the hip. Now this, have, this cow is pretty slick and uh, clean and dry. If this was a, if she had a lot of hair, we would probably have to come in here and make three quick clips, just go right, right up between her two ribs, right across the top here, and then from the hip bone, aim towards the tail head, just a real quick clip right there. Because under all that hair, you get a lot of dirt, manure, hay, whatever, ice, snow sometimes, and it has to be, that image has to be clean of all those, uh, of all those uh, products before we can get a good clean image on her. So what we do is if she was hairy, we would clip her here and here and then we apply the oil, because you need that oil to soak in. You want this oil to be roughly their body temperature. When it's real cold, I carry a bucket heater with me, and I fill that bucket full of water and heat that water up, and I drop the oil in the water to keep the oil warm, because when it's real cold, this oil will try to congeal on you, and it makes it more difficult to get a proper image. And so we place the oil on her back, measuring right here where we want to go, scrape it out, and you want it to run clear because you, you'll be pulling dirt, manure, and hay out. And you want to get all that out of that image, any old hair. And then you go back in and place more oil, and then we'll get ready to do the image. The same way on the hip right here, we're going to be aiming for the tail there. We apply oil, brush it in, scrape it down, and then apply some more. Okay. First off, I get my probe seated in its standoff pad. Go find the last two ribs, place the probe and watch the screen at the same time, and then we come up with the ribeye image right there. And okay. off this one image, we'll measure uh, back fat and ribeye area. This top white line up inside the screen, you see the curvature of the back here, that top white line and that black right under it, that's the hide. The second one, I'm going to click over here where these lines disappear. That second white line here where this blue line is measuring from there to the bottom here is the back fat. This is where it was coming up with the 0.47 inches of uh, back fat right there. And then you come down here is your longissimus dorsi, your ribeye area that we're looking for. So I'm just kind of tracing it roughly here. Look for different landmarks. This cow 
that's fairly fat and that's an older cattle, we usually do in yearling cattle. And you look for a spinous process, kind of shows up down here on this bottom end. And you look for all these landmarks as you're, to make sure you're in the proper area. For tracing it, it gives you actual reading at the same time. I traced it and I got a 14.31 uh, square inches uh, ribeye. That's everything, the total area inside this area that I traced. Right underneath it is the average back fat. It measured this machine, or the software measured the back fat all the way across here around an average. And it says she has just under a half inch of back fat. Okay. If I knew what the, the weight of this cow was, let's just say she weighs 1,300, 1,200 1, pounds. I could plug this in right here. Let's just say 1,200 for, for uh, math sake here. It gives ribeye per hundred weight right here under the back fat. And that's telling you there's 1.19 square inches of ribeye for every hundred pounds. Instead of saying, well, this is the biggest ribeye, this is the smallest ribeye, you want to look at how much each animal weighs because uh, they will all have different ribeye per hundred weights and that's a good way to compare uh, cattle that are in the contemporary group when you're looking at just ribeye size. Looking, what I was mentioning earlier about looking for, for uh, landmarks to get a proper image, uh, you can get, there's all, you can't make an ima, a rib eye any bigger than what it is, but you sure make it look smaller if you get across the rib or on a rib. Now, I'm always moving my hand here. You see that cut up on the bottom. Mm -hmm. There's that rib rolling up underneath there as I'm moving my hand. That's the way I know I'm on a bad, I'm in the wrong spot. If I try to turn in an image that has a uh, across the rib or something like that, it's going to be rejected at the labs. Now to measure marbling, we're going to lay it right across the top of their back here, right across that muscle. Picture if this was a log. If you were, if you're measuring ribeye area, you just cut the log in half and you measure the total face of that log. Now for a marbling image, we're going to be splitting that log long ways and shooting straight down through it. So we'll get a bigger surface area for measuring our intramuscular fat. And we're looking for the same thing. We're looking for the last three ribs in that screen. Uh, we want that because uh, we have to measure between the 12th and 13th rib. If I go too far forward, we start getting too much spinalis. The image is blocked. If I move too far back, then we get into our lumbars. So we want to be right between or right over the last three ribs. And we want to we'll see nice clean rib images show up on that screen. You're looking for the last three ribs. This is your 13th, 12th, 11th rib. And you see up top is the hide. There's your back fat that we saw on the ribeye image. And this is shooting long ways through the muscle. And these are the tops of the last three ribs. And we're gonna measure the amount of marbling between these last two ribs. And I'm gonna collect at least four images or five. And then we'll get a, a reading on each one and then we'll run an average. And that's where you come up with your average intramuscular fat per annum. Okay, we're going over here now to our shoot side reading. I've already triggered it. I'll show you what happens here. This box comes up in here, and what it's gonna do is measure everything, the white. The whiter this image is, the higher they marble. And uh, conversely, if this, animal, if this animal didn't have a lot of marbling, this image would be real dark. And so what we're, it's doing is measuring up there. Now, like with the other, uh, with the ribeye tracing, I can interact and move this box where it needs to be. I want to place it somewhere in this area between the 12th and 13th rib, and it gives a reading over here at the same time. And if I place that box everywhere, so far where I've done these two, and we've got a 4.11. It originally measured her as 4.18, I believe. Those are all within the uh, uh, the uh, you know the average there, so we wouldn't have to move that box if we want to. Now what you don't want to do is for this box to be over here. As we move farther over here towards the spinalis, we get underneath it and this number tends to go up and you get an inaccurate reading. What we're looking for, this number is going to be a direct correlation to your quality grades in your meat. Uh, standard, select, choice, and prime. When you're in that four area, you're, in the, you're up uh, into choice. This is a good solid number. Uh, so that's kind of a number where a lot of people with ear cattle are shooting for uh, up above this. You see higher numbers, and then as that does, your quality grade goes up also. 
but if this had been a dark image, this number might be a, a two or even less than that, then you're getting down into select and standard, which is what we haven't been aiming for. Um, this is a bad marbling image. I kind of blurred this bottom here, but you see this is the finalis moving into the picture here. And if you have, you're allowed, you can get an image with a little bit of finalis. If it's more than a third of the image, that image would automatically be rejected. This is the same cow we measured a minute ago. This image is blurred. She just jumped a full percentage reading in her IMF just off a blurred image. Which isn't, it, which is a, a wrong number, but that's why uh, positioning of the cattle and quality image is so important. Then on rump fat, some breeds require this, some don't. But what we're doing is we're going right to the hip bone, and we're going to pivot off that towards the tail head. And I watch the screen, and I'm going to get a good clean image that shows uh, the curvature of the pelvic bone here. It's a pretty quick, simple image to pick up. Just freeze it. Big comparing this rump fat here, well, we're, it's hard to tell sometimes, but there's a line that runs between the two muscles. And where the two muscles meet is where we measure. And usually you'll see a dip in this rump fat. Uh, this curvature under here is the curvature of the pelvic bone. And this is the hooks right here. And you just kind of get a good, clean image. But we're basically looking for this one spot. And what we're going to do is measure, place our cursor right there, and then we come up here to the top where the top of the back of uh, the rump fat is. It moves around there, right there. We get 0.66 inches of rump fat on her. I got interested in this when I was working on a ranch. I saw it done, it was kind of early in the uh, process. The ultrasounding was just kind of coming to the forefront. And, uh, there was a school available in the, that you can go to. They, they have one once a year up in Iowa that you can go. You don't have to have any equipment yet, but you can go and train. You'll train on cattle. You'll do classroom, uh, classroom work. You'll learn the ins and outs and good, bad images, everything. And then you have to go through a certification process. You have to purchase your own equipment for that, uh, but you have to go through a test where they'll run uh, just a generic set of cattle through They'll be numbered, you scan them one time, and then they, run, they change the back tags and run the same set of cattle through again. You're not allowed to take any notes as you're doing this. And what they'll do is measure, uh, your, they will compare your readings, your images from that animal when you do them twice. They're measuring your repeatability because that's what's very important is this, that we just continuously get the correct, the right images because that's, uh, uh, that seems to be the, the key to being successful with having, you know, the right numbers. Ultrasound Guideline Council has a website that give, gives you dates of where they're going to have the uh, certifications and where you can go to school. Uh, you can go, if you know somebody who does this, you might be trained with them. I know a lot of people that have trained with somebody else first, uh, and that's what I did, uh, and then got competent at it, and then I went to a certification. You have to go. They uh, have to go through certification. At least you have to pass at least two consecutive uh, certifications, in before you don't have to go back again. But then you have to do, do through a uh, certification of Essentia. Uh, but what they do is at the labs, the UGC audits our image quality twice a year. Uh, the middle and the end of the year, they send they because they're always judging when we submit these images to the lab. They give a quality score to each one. They, it runs an average on you all year long, and you have to stay above a certain number uh, of uh, image quality, because if you drop below that, they'll put you on probation or they'll take away your certification. So there are, we're always being judged in this. Uh, no matter you know where you're at, your image qualities are gonna follow you, and so you wanna just be consistent and do the right thing, uh, get the good images all the time.